Good morning. Welcome to Smart History. I'm David, and I have here my colleague Daniel. Good morning, David. This morning, we're going to have uh, a lot of Davids. We're going to be looking at three sculptures of David by three different artists in and around the Renaissance period. And the first one here is of Donatello. Tell us a little bit about it, David. All right, well, looking at the statue, you can naturally see that the figure is young, and it's of a young boy. He seems very innocent. Uh, his stance is somewhat leaned in, and he's, he's he looks really uh, it, really childlike, really uh, yeah, exactly, really innocent. Exactly. And this was this was a sculpture commissioned by the Medici family for their own personal court, and so we could see that that Donatello put a little bit more yeah. of that you know that sensual that uh, that sort of provocative nature mm -hmm. into the sculpture for the Medici. Yeah, and I think it, we should, uh, it's interesting to look at, though, how he kind of sculpted the figure because his body, I don't know, I, I think he was trying to put in almost like a natural look. I mean, you could, when looking at him, the, the statue of David, you could tell just from his back that he kind of has, his muscles are light, not as developed. Right, it looks know. like a baby's butt. Yeah, exactly, it looks like exactly. A, like a little baby's butt. And that really sort of tells us something about, about Donatello and how he wants to portray David. And this, this figure yeah. has been a, been a really important figure for Florence, too, in that, you know, David, the, the one who kills Goliath, the one who, yeah. the one who overcomes uh, his, his really uh, underdog -ness, and he, he kills David only, mm -hmm. only by the power of God, right? Yeah, I, I see it. exactly. And it's... Yeah, so I think the main point, though, is that because we see a representation of David and God and the Holy Spirit working through him, we easily make that connection because as a young boy, this David, he's yielding a large weapon. And, of course, such a young person like him wouldn't have the strength to be able to carry that. So I think that really Donatello was trying to make it seem as this, this statue of David was an instrument working through God. And I think that was a really interesting thing we noticed. Right, and in this view right here, it, it, it looks really odd. I think it's one of the, one of the most interesting uh, and, and yeah, odd, yeah, just odd looking mm -hmm. uh, perspectives of this one. Just so, so much more different than the front or the, or the side. Yeah, the and I think, I think you, we, know, we noticed that though, is because his pectoral bones, I mean, looking at the body where his abdomen is, like they just don't match really with his ribs. And, it almost gives the statue like a natural but unnatural look. And right, you, you you talked about the pectorals, and it and it kind of looks as though um, this this figure might have breasts, and I think it it also looks as though there might be um, two like each each yeah. half each mm -hmm. half of the body might be of a different aged uh, individual. Mm -hmm. The the bottom half looks so much younger than the top half. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. Well, let's shift focus to another statue of David, this one specifically by Michelangelo. Uh, this one was completed in 1504, which was obviously many years after Donatello's completion. Right, about 70 years later. Stat yeah, exactly, of his statue of David. So, um, let's take a look at it, Daniel. Like, what, do you, what do you see? What's interesting? Well, uh, it's really hard to deny that this is definitely one of the most iconic images yeah. in all, or uh, most iconic pieces of art in mm -hmm. all, of, all of art history. And we we look at this one, and we can see the the perfection and the and the an anatomical yeah. representation of of this David. He's a little older, a little more mature, um, and he's definitely uh, stronger looking, more muscle mass. And um, yeah, exactly. Right. You could definitely note that just looking at the sculpture. Like his muscles are very, his his shoulders are broad. You know, his arms are very defined. He he's but it, it's. Even though he looks older, he still seems to be... Um, right, he's David. He's David. Yeah, he's not yeah. supposed to be that old. He's still supposed to be a young hero. Mm -hmm. And But the reason for all this this anatomical perfection is, is because of the fact that Michelangelo had a unique opportunity to study the human body. Yeah, that, most, was, yeah that, that is one of his things that he took into like he, right that was that was uh um, learned that's how he learned a lot of his sculpting like he was super famous for he this. understood the body right that? exactly because most uh most artists had to do this in secret but mm -hmm. michelangelo was able to do this 
um, in a in a cathedral where he was creating this cross yeah. mm -hmm. for this church, and so he was able to view the body before they were going to be buried. Right, and so that also gives him the opportunity to show off as a sculptor. He's known for having uh, just this art that, yeah. is, that is so massive, right? Mm -hmm. And so this is how he chooses to portray David as more of a, a more of a massive uh, figure, more of a presence in that way. Yeah, and I think it's really accurately presented just his skill in you know defining the human body as something that. It grows, you know, it's just more mature compared to other, or the previous sculpture of David by Donatello. Exactly, exactly. And so I feel as though also this, this David sculpture is more of a, uh, of a, of a, something for people to look up to no matter, it's, Michelangelo has also taken away all of these, uh, these props i guess yeah. you'd say it's you, you can't even see the sling i i didn't even know there was a sling there until looking through pictures mm, of it it's absent exactly right we don't see that and so it's 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 sort of a, a juxtaposition to the to the donatello one mm -hmm. which has have, yeah it has donatello's statue there he carries you know you see the weapon the one that he slayed goliath's head off with you right. see um, just attributes of him more. You see the head. You see the hat. The hat. You see the hat example. that connects him to Florence. But this mm -hmm. one is not is not connecting him in any way to anything but the human figure. Mm -hmm. And through that, yeah. I also feel. And through that, we can also connect it to God too. Exactly. Because, exactly. because of the 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 revival of of a uh, human figure and mm -hmm. and the, the the natural beauty of the human right, form. Right. The human form. And so God made man in in His own image. And so. This yeah. is this is also focusing on on the, the design of of mm -hmm. God designing man, mm -hmm. making him like himself, and so this is this is almost a, in his essence yeah. a, a, a sculpture of God himself. I agree completely. It definitely has a divine presence to it. You know, right? Exactly. This, this form. All right. Well, let's move over to this other statue, David. Um, this one completed in 1624, and I think we should note that it's much different than the other two, specifically because this one's by Bernini. Right. You know, different it's, artists, it's different time era. Completely different, a lot more evolved in the in the uh, ability to portray such a such a contorted anatomical position, right? He's mm -hmm. he's he's swinging back, he's uh, loading the sling, he's gonna definitely taking some effort, it looks like. Right. There's a lot of tension in the muscles yeah. and and especially his expression as well. Mm -hmm. And we can see how how this is also the midpoint between the other two sculptures, between the mm -hmm. between Donatello and and Michelangelo. And this is this is this moment where he's about to sling this rock and kill Goliath. Exactly. And this statue of David, I think, really encaptures a moment right before he slays Goliath. The miracle. Right. This is this is the miracle. This is the reason why he is an icon, is that uh, in this moment, mm -hmm. God inhabits. He comes into David, and he gives works him this through power. Him. Right, works through him, and that's also shown by his hair. His mm -hmm. hair uh, is actually parted in three ways. If you if you look closely, and this is supposed to be representation of uh, of the Holy Trinity. Exactly, and I think he really wanted to show that message and express it. Just, right, just being more more Christian. All right, well, now let's compare each of the statues of David side by side. I mean, what kind of progression do we see here? We like, see a real progression in uh, anatomical precision, right? A more realistic, more humanistic. Mm -hmm. um, with Michelangelo, it's, it's, com it's very lifelike. It's mm -hmm. very vivid. Uh, with the other two, not so much. But we do see more emotion in Bernini's, right? A lot more, a lot more. Each of them look like a different person. And... Especially, well, starting with Donatello's, I mean, you see he looks like a, a person that, a male, female, you can't really tell. The long hair kind of, you know, gives that ambiguity. And then when you look at Michelangelo's and Bernini's, uh, Michelangelo's still, you know, you see that kind of the facial expression that kind of could give away, could give away the idea that you're looking at different people. Yeah, they, they all do look pretty different. And I would argue that that's, because of uh, the fact that we're seeing David through the eyes of the artist and through uh, the ideas and and what what this icon of, of David really means to them 
and how 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 they also connecting with God and with with Florence and with mankind through that. 